fish on the scene Franchise best on the team Blue faces busting out the scene New life is something like a dream Back out fresh on the scene Franchise best on the team Blue faces busting out the scene New life is something like a dream Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Ebony. All right, you guys, I am back with the recap of day two for the Megan Thee Stallion Tory Lanez trial. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what Megan Thee Stallion actually said on the stand. And I'm also going to show you guys how that contradicts what the prosecution said in their opening statement. And then we'll wrap up the video with a lawyer reaction, you guys know, from Lawyers for Workers, so you guys can kind of get a legal synopsis of what happened on day two. So let's get into it. Megan took the stand around like 11 in the morning and the first half of her testimony wasn't as long but she was extremely nervous and the meat and potatoes actually kind of happened the second half. So I'm going to briefly go over what she said in the morning and then we're going to get into the substance of her testimony. So when Megan got on the stand she was asked did she know Tory Lanez? People said that she hesitated and it was almost like she was crying and she did identify Tory Lanez, the defendant, as the person she's accusing of harming her. Now, the lawyer also, and this is the state, keep in mind we are talking about direct examination. The prosecutor then asked Megan about Kelsey and Megan pretty much explained that her and Kelsey met the freshman year of college and they were really close. Megan even said, quote, we did everything together. Now, Megan actually changes, okay, her story on the stand. She said, Saying that she was not jealous that Tory Lanez was talking to Kylie Jenner. However, she wanted to leave because her lace front wig was slipping off. She said she felt super uncomfortable at the party. You guys remember, prosecutors also contended that Megan Thee Stallion wanted to leave because she was ready to go home. It had nothing to do with Tory Lanez flirting with Kylie Jenner. You guys remember that the defense attorney's contention is that the reason Tory Lanez was actually being asked to leave is because Megan Thee Stallion was making the situation super awkward. Megan was allegedly upset that Tori was flirting with Kylie. So she told Tori, let's go. But Tori wasn't ready to go. So Megan Thee Stallion made a scene. And this is where the defense attorney says Kylie Jenner told Megan, basically, you need to leave. Now, Megan Thee Stallion, again, refutes the defense that she was jealous of Kylie. And Megan actually switched it. She said, look, I wanted Tori to come with me, but he wasn't ready to leave. And then Megan said, says that the driver would not leave the party without Tory Lane. So this is why she was still stuck there. Let's back up a little bit. You guys know that Megan Thee Stallion went to Kylie Jenner's party with EJ. She actually had to go get her stuff out of EJ's car to put it in Tory's car so that she could be taken home. Now it was actually said during the defense's opening statement that Megan Thee Stallion did successfully leave the party but she told Tory Lane's driver to turn around because she forgot some now this is where things get a little bit sticky because Megan leaves the party she comes back to the party and this is where she's causing more of a scene and Kylie Jenner allegedly had to walk up to her and tell her to leave now Megan goes on to say this she says look the fight wasn't just about you know me and Kelsey or things that I've done to Kelsey behind the scenes it was the fact that Tory Lanez was being messy Kelsey was defending me against Tory Lanez now while they're in the car this is where Tory Lanez turns around to Kelsey and goes, what are you defending her for? She's been smashing all the dudes that you've been trying to get. And this is where the fight between Kelsey and Megan actually gets uncomfortable. Now keep in mind, Megan Thee Stallion then says, as all of them are arguing, she has to be let out the car. And so she gets out the car, but Tori convinces her to get back in. Then after they got back in the car, the arguing continued and it actually got worse, according to Megan. So Megan asked to be let out the car a second time. So that would mean there were two two stops. The first stop, not too far from the party where Tori told Megan to get back in the car. Then the second stop because the argument continued to escalate. Now here is where the gray area really does start. It starts with the actual events of the being brandished and used. So Megan stated that when she got out of the car, she looked back and seen Tori with the object in the hand, basically popping it over the car door. She says that she could not tell prosecutors 
if he was standing on something while popping or if his feet were touching the ground while over the SUV door. Megan also contradicted what the prosecutor said in his opening statement. The prosecutors alleged that Kelsey was closest to Tori when the actual event happened. Megan stated though when she looked back she didn't even see Kelsey. She only seen Tori popping at her. Then Megan also contradicted the prosecutor's opening statement because she said that after she got popped she limped away and Kelsey came to check on her. Now Megan said when she got popped and limped away that both Tori and Kelsey began to approach her at the same time. Now some of the things that Megan said Tori was saying in the vehicle was pretty much that Kelsey and her were b-words and hoes and that they sleep around with everyone. Now Megan the Stallion also brought up the fact that people in the industry don't want to mess with her. She says that the rap industry is a boy's game and a lot of her peers feel that she hasn't been truly honest. Megan also admitted that her boyfriend Partisan Fontaine is very embarrassed every time he has to log online to see who another sexual partner she had is instead of actually getting justice for what happened to her. She says her boyfriend is extremely embarrassed over this and she also said that she was embarrassed to admit admit that Tory Lanez and her had an intimate relationship. Megan said this, she did not want to let the world know that someone she had let in her body did that. We knew, right, that Tori and Megan had some type of relationship. There's no reason for her to be embarrassed because we know that these two obviously had feelings and things escalated. So it's just so weird how Megan really contradicted her story with the prosecutor. The prosecutor's opening statement is a mess. You have your star witness the victim contradicting what you said. Prosecutors again said that Kelsey was closest to Tori when the firearm went off. If that's the case why is Megan saying she didn't see Kelsey? Now Megan is saying that she was still you know facing forward her back to the SUV but she turned her head to look. This would also contradict Megan the Stallion's IG lie where she admitted and said that she was popped in both feet with the intention to be hurt by someone. But it's still not over, right? Megan still has a chance to redeem herself. The court still has a chance to redeem itself. And it's really going to come down to a couple of things. What is Kelsey going to say on the stand? How is Kelsey going to explain gunshot residue on her hands? How are they going to explain Tory Lanez, who's about 5'5", five five, leaning over the car to pop at Megan? How are they also going to explain what Megan said earlier in her testimony? Megan said this. She said, look, when the actual incident happened, all three of them look surprised. Tori was surprised, Kelsey was surprised, and Megan was surprised. If Tori is intentionally trying to hurt you, right, why would he be surprised that the actual weapon went off? Unless it was an accident. Unless they didn't expect it to go off. There's also this contention that Megan Thee Stallion lies to protect her identity and image. And I think that's going to be something for the jury to consider. But again, this is just the beginning. And we really don't know at this point what Kelsey's going to say. But now we understand why the prosecutor added that third felony. They don't know if Tori intentionally wanted to hurt Meg. So they added that third felony so that the jury could consider that yes, maybe he did shoot at the ground. Maybe he did shoot at the wall, but there was a reasonable belief that people around him would be hurt. Therefore, he is guilty of that assault. So that's pretty much my wrap up of today's court. I'm going to go ahead and play a lawyer's reaction to day two so he can also provide an update and recap on the trial today. And after this plays, you guys let me know what you think about this topic. How do you feel about the new evidence? What are your thoughts on Megan Thee Stallion saying that her boyfriend's embarrassed and people in the industry don't want to be cool with her? Do you think it's her own doing, being too mixy, being too vulnerable, or being too thirsty for company because she doesn't have the family that she's used to? Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel and we'll talk very soon. Day two of the trial is in the books. Meg Thee Stallion has finished testifying. Let me catch you up on what happened in the afternoon session. It started with the prosecutor leading with this. She said, hey, Meg, I know we went a little fast this morning. I want to slow down. And Meg said, yeah, I, I, I was a little nervous. And then Meg actually said, these are her words. She said, I want to feel strong. I want to come off 
strong and I didn't. And then she proceeded to testify and she did come off a lot stronger and a lot more sure of herself in the afternoon session. There were powerful moments talking about he shot me, pointing, talking about the pain and the trauma and the emotion this whole situation has caused her, talking about how she initially did not want to do this. She wanted to try to protect Tori. And so there were very powerful moments of the testimony. She explained that ultimately she did decide to go to the police and say that Tori was the shooter because of the false narratives that Tori had put out there. In her mind, she felt like she was a grown woman. She shouldn't have been hanging out with these people, getting involved in this mess. I'm not quite sure who the, these people that like she was referring to when she was like, oh, I shouldn't be hanging out with them. She was hanging out with like Kylie Jenner, her assistant, Tori Lane. So I guess she just meant Tori. I thought that statement was very indicative about how Meg feels about this whole situation, which is basically that she did nothing wrong. She had nothing to do with this mess and she just wants to be completely removed from the whole situation. She denied that Kylie Jenner told her to leave. She denied that her, the security guard and Kelsey had at one point left and then came back because she said, I want to go back to get Tori. She said that it was the security guard who wouldn't leave without Tori and that's why she was there. But at the same time, she also admitted that she didn't want to leave without Tori. So again, it, there was a lot of this, she just didn't want to say anything that made her image look bad and I don't know why. She denied that there was any sort of relationship between Kelsey and Tori, which could have led to her being accused of going behind Kelsey's back. And like in the car, she admits that in the car, Kelsey accused her of going behind her back. So I don't know how she's denying that there's no relationship between the defense attorney asked her, Hey, what did Kelsey mean when Kelsey said that this isn't the first time you've gone behind my back? And Meg said, Oh, I don't know. Then we get to the shooting sequence, and I think the defense attorney did a really good job here focusing on the fact that, hey, did Meg the Stallion actually see who was shooting the gun? I don't think there's any doubt that five shots rang out. The question is, who pulled the trigger? Was somebody shoot pointing at her? And who? The defense attorney established this, that Meg is in the front seat, front passenger, that Kelsey is directly behind Meg, and that Tori is in the rear passenger seat. He got Meg to testify this. Meg gets out of the car. She walks a couple steps to the front of the car by the uh, absolute front. And then she goes a couple steps beyond that. All of this took a couple seconds. Within that time, apparently, Tory Lanez has made it from the rear passenger seat to now being on the passenger side. And from the passenger side, he pulls out a gun. She said he pulled the gun. From where, it's not clear, but he pulled the gun. He points it at her and shoots five times. Right before shooting, he yelled, dance bitch, leading her to turn around and then see him with the gun. He pulls it, points, shoots, five shots. Where's Kelsey in all this? She has no idea. What does she then do? She then crawls away. The part that the defense attorney focused on is how, in a matter of seconds, does he get from the rear passenger to having a gun in his hand to being on the passenger side in position to shoot over the window at you all in a matter of seconds. To me, there had to be something else that happened in that sequence of events from the time she got out of the car and the time the shots rang out. And then she completely denied that there was any sort of altercation between her and Kelsey as to whether there was an altercation between Kelsey and Tori. And there has to be some altercation nails because there's a fingernail on the ground and there's jewelry on the ground. And so how did, and Kelsey has blood on her. Kelsey has her, her swimsuit strap ripped off. So how did that all happen? And apparently there was a bump. She says that I saw a bump between Tori and Kelsey. And I guess the prosecutors will use that to establish why Kelsey has got her strap ripped and jewelry on the floor broken and a fingernail lying on the middle of the street. Bottom line, her testimony was strong. It was powerful. It was a victim telling you that a man shot her. All right, so from here, I think there's two important issues with this case. One, what are the other witnesses gonna say? What's the driver gonna say? What's Kelsey gonna say? And what is the wit Nate? There was a homeowner who lived there who's in the house that is very close, very adjacent to where all of this is unfolding. He would have seen and heard a lot. He's gonna testify. The other thing, the defense did a really good job of establishing that, hey, Meg's timeline here of in a few seconds, Tori gets out of the rear passenger, gets onto the passenger side of the vehicle, yells, dance bitch, pulls a gun, lets out five shots. That there could have been a lot more that happened there in that sequence because that's a lot of things happening in a very small amount of time. And it is not clear from Meg's testimony that a jury would go ahead and say, oh yeah, that man pulled a gun and he was shooting out. I could see the jury looking at that testimony, looking at that sequence of events saying that doesn't add up and that means reasonable doubt. Or looking at it and saying, well, okay, maybe something happened here, but did this guy intentionally pull a gun and shoot at this woman? No, maybe there was another shooter. Maybe there's another explanation of how those gunshots rang out. Social media games by now, then I don't know what to tell y'all, but you guys have to pay attention. Like, 
I knew this was going to happen. This is just the beginning, y'all. I know y'all want me to talk, but this is just the beginning. So, like, when it's my turn, just know. I'm going to break everything the f okay? And we're going to see who really look bad in the end. I'm back out fresh on the scene. Franchise best on the team. Blue faces busting out the scene. New life is something like a dream. Back out fresh on the scene. Franchise best on the team. Blue faces busting out the scene. New life is something like a dream.